So you are a mom and pop landlord. You go ahead and advertise your properties. Do you know what website gets you the most leads? How about the website that gets you the most qualified leads? And of course, when should you be showing your properties? We're going to have the conversation with the CEO of Hemlane, who is going to give the data across tens of thousands of units. And we're going to find out what's what. How you doing, Dana? I'm great. Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, absolutely. So again, let's just set the stage for folks that don't know who Hemlane is. Let's talk about all the the you know the places where you help advertise uh, for folks, and then we'll get into what you saw in the data. Yeah. So we we're huge on data, and the reason to be huge on data is it actually helps make product decisions. You know, if a website, if we are not syndicating to a website because maybe the API is down. Well, what is the impact to our customers? And so instead of just guessing what's going on with your property, we're able to say, hey, we have tens of thousands of properties like yours, mm -hmm. the small mom and pop, so typically under 20 unit complexes. Yep. Um, how are how are these websites performing and what actually will get tenants in the door and where are tenants searching as well as when when do they want to come and view the property and so we we go out there and we cast a broad net and we tell everyone we advertise across 30 rental listing websites which I think is more than any other partner out there. Maybe like Rent Cafe has uh, the same number, but it was really important to us to say, we go out and we just advertise your property everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are localized as well that we can do. Um, we can tap into you know local small uh, listing websites. But here is the interesting thing and the trend that we continue to see. There is a consolidation of listing websites. Mm. So much of a consolidation that you actually, you know, five or six years ago, you kept hearing of all these like rent, um, show me the rent, um, you know, um, off campus housing, apartment love, U Loop, Rentler. You'd hear like all of these websites, they all had rent for some reason in them. Mm -hmm. um, I don't yeah. know why, or list in them. But you're seeing a consolidation because tenants are all having this brand awareness of this is where I go to search for rental property. Okay. And so, Michael, I want you to guess what is the website that garners the most traffic um, of all listing websites out there? Rent.com. No. <laughs> not even, not even, well, it, it is up there. That's owned by the uh, Rent Path Network, but it is the Zillow group. I and thought Zillow, Zillow first. But... <laughs> now guess how many inquiries come from Zillow. So of the tenants who inquire about your property and say, hey, Michael, I'd love to set up a showing. Guess what percentage of inquiries? Now this is nationwide, our data. Okay. Um, so they they find it, but then it becomes into the funnel. That's what you're saying. What percent? Um, well, they find they've inquired about it. We don't okay. even know. We'll get into applications afterwards. But guess okay. what percent? It, like guess what percentage of all inquiries that funnel in come from Zillow? Oh, okay. So what percent is Zillow of all of them? Yeah, of all of them. And Zillow. Let me give you a hint. It's called the Zillow Group. So it's Zillow, Hot Pads, and Trulia because they okay. that's all. Three. Okay. I'm going to go 50%. They own half the market. Oh, uh, really? 60. 69.77%. Let's call it 70. So Zillow owns so 70%, 70 of inquiries so, come in. Now, of course, wow. you want to say, I want to get 100%, right? And so for us, we found that. Well, let me, I, I got, I have to ask a question yeah. first. Yeah. So if I'm just a mom and pop, I don't have Hemlane. I'm sorry. For the moment, I don't have it. Does it cost me anything to advertise on, on Zillow? Zillow put paywalls up. So they will uh, do a, it's like a $10 advertising um, to get there. I think your first, your first rental should still be free. After your first rental, then they start charging you for it as you add more. Um, and then they charge you a weekly rate um, to advertise of course they with do. them. Well, they're the yeah. gorilla, right? They have, they have, I mean, if you have 70% of the market, you have pricing power. Exactly. So, yeah. Pretty interesting. Yes. Okay. So, but rent, 
rent.com is an interesting one because rent.com is number two. And rent.com, for people who don't know, it's a consolidation. So rent.com used to be rentals.com. I think it was apartment guide, live lovely, and rent.com. They had private equity come in, consolidate all of them together. And then they've gone through and resold to Redfin to say Redfin's like, we got to catch up with Zillow. Zillow's doing something on the rental side. We've got to catch up as well. And so that was the whole push of it moving from private equity back into a company that focuses solely on real estate, the real estate industry. I got to ask, is second place even double digits? I mean, are they 10%? Yeah, good question. 8.78%. They're not even 10%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's not good. And, and the thing is, is tenants don't have brand awareness of it. And yeah. so from that perspective, um, you know, I think it's one of those things where tenants hear of Zillow, rent.com, they haven't really heard of. And it's it's actually interesting. You talk to we, I, I think actually the younger generation is starting to hear about it more because it's relatively newer, fresher. They've modernized everything. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you talk to my generation, I'm, I'm, I'm old, right? I'm 30, 38 years old. Um, not old. I, I, I was like, you know, pad mapper, hot pads, yeah. you know, all these things I heard about when I was looking for rentals. Those are like not even needles in the haystack. Yeah. It's uh, impossible to get leads uh, from them. So yeah, that um, that group yeah. is number two. I, I, I'm curious about Zillow because it's funny. I just read an article. There's a big nasty short seller going after Zillow saying that all this stuff going on in real estate's going to take down their margins. I, I have no idea and you probably don't either, but I'm going to ask anyway. What kind of revenue stream like what percent, any guess what percent of the rental listings revenue is of total Zillow? Is it like 5% or oh, something? No, I think it's, an, I also think it's very, very low compared it's to the revenue. Now small. it's probably going up, but Zillow historically was not really making any money off of mm-hmm. rentals. And now they've made a big push with it with background and credit checks. And they've started to say, well, if, okay, we're going to offer more yeah. services. Yes. They got 70% of the market. It's time to, it's time to monetize. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, and crazy. so, and it's really because of tenants, tenants have that awareness of it. Right. Okay. But here's what's interesting about it and where Zillow may not be as good. And there's other websites that are bigger culprits of this. Okay. But Zillow actually doesn't have the best conversions of all of those inquiries they get in. So a tenant saying, hey, I'm interested in a property of yours. I'm interested in a property of yours. They actually don't get the most number as a percentage conversion to an applicant applying. Oh, it's interesting. It's so you're getting a lot of eyeballs, but you're, you're getting not converting. a lot of eyeballs. And here's what I think it is that they they do probably better than others because they have a good product team. Um, they basically, if I'm a tenant and I inquire a, about a property, and you, could, it's kind of fun to go through these websites to understand what's going on. If you think from the the experience, I'll inquire and I'll say, great, I'm interested in 123 Main Street. Mm -hmm. Zillow will really push you and make it easy because they already checked the boxes. Great, inquire about these 10 other properties in the area. Mm. Even if I'm not interested in them, they're just like, great, inquire so that the landlords feel like, oh, wow, this is a ton of people interested in my property. Oh, wow. So they count that as interest. That's And because that's that's an inquiry, right? Because it's an inquiry. I inquire about one property. And it's it's a template. Yeah, it's a template that says like, hey, I'm interested in your property and would love to schedule a showing, right? And I can customize it and say something else to the landlord. But then, you know, you click the submit and it's like, great, you know, you want us to advertise this elsewhere and uh, to others right so i think there's a lot of that going on not zillow's not the only culprit Mm -hmm. we've actually seen some other websites where we have some questions of whether it's a lot of bots on those Mm -hmm. websites doing the inquiries because it's easier to do bots on smaller websites that aren't zillow um that Mm -hmm. can detect bots there's quite a few where it's like hey we get quite a few inquiries from these but the conversion rate to an applicant is so low. Mm. And when you're calling them, 
they don't respond or answer, you know, how qualified is this inquiry? And I think there's two reasons for that, that some of these websites don't have that. The first is the bots and, yep. um, you know, scrapers going in, that's number one. And then the second um, reason that you would see that conversion rate lower is these product tactics of saying, great, we're going to shoot your yeah. you as a tenant who's looking out to everyone, even if you're not interested in that property, it's close enough to the other one. Yeah. And and I, I may have, did you say CoStar has the best conversion? Is that what you said? So CoStar has much a much smaller part of the market. They're at, um, for inquiries, oh, you know what? Sorry, uh, Redpath is number um, three. That's my fault. Uh, it's CoStar who's number two. Okay, and they only have 11, 11.3% of the market. Okay, but so double digits, okay. They have more than double a conversion rate on those to applicant, meaning more qualified tenants who come through it. And apartments.com, when you think about it, because CoStar's competitor to Zillow, mm -hmm. rental manager, is apartments.com. Okay. Um, what's interesting about that is that um, they, um, it, you would think as a tenant, I'd be like, oh, it's called apartments.com. I'm not looking for an apartment. I'm looking for a yep. single family home. But we don't see that. We see hmm. because they also have single family homes, tenants are still going on there and finding single family homes. And so oh, I think, okay. yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, kind of my takeaway in all of this is one, um, just because you have a lot of inquiries does not mean those are qualified inquiries. You have to yeah. really make sure that um, you're seeing how the conversions are going downstream. So when you get four inquiries in right away, you're not going to be like, I better increase my price. You have to yeah. really make sure these are qualified because of what these listing websites are doing to encourage more or yeah. bots that are going into them. And then the second thing with it is, you know, there's these top websites that are consolidating the market. And my projection in the next five years is that all these smaller guys will just go away, right? Mm -hmm. And be oh, just yeah. a, 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 a rounding error because yeah. of with SEO, the big guys, search engine optimization can make sure they're always at the top of Google. They can have that brand awareness on billboards for tenants and they'll be the largest players. Um, so anyways, we advertise to all of them. We do not, um, from that perspective, um, choose only one because the market is changing a lot sure. and SEO changes for each one of them. But it is really interesting that these big players in the space are really the the winners and you wouldn't have seen that before. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Well, you asked me a question earlier about the, what was it, the best day or best time to uh, do a walkthrough or, or show a tenant? Was that the question? Yeah. So we do, to give you guys some background, we do showing seven days of the week. So mm -hmm. if you're um, using our self-guided tour technology, we say, great, a tenant can view the property seven days of the week. The reason for that is we want the moment that inquiry comes in, they can go out to the property four hours later to view it. Mm -hmm. So we don't lose them to someone else. And um, there were some stats. Um, these are about a year old. Um, so they might have changed slightly. But um, they say that a tenant will, when they inquire and like actually reach out if I'm interested in this property, it's an average of seven mm -hmm. that they will but they only go to three of them for showings. And by oh, then they've made that decision. And okay. so what you want to do is be one of those three, essentially. And um, so we do show in seven days of the week. Um, I had my opinions of which days tenants were more likely to uh, schedule a tour. But what do you think, Michael? What do you think are the hottest days to schedule a showing? I'm going to go Monday and more specifically Monday morning. Nope. Damn it. All right. No idea. Friday morning. Friday what? morning is the highest. Yes. And then the second is Saturday late morning. So Saturday early morning, like the 9 a.m., the 8 a.m. that you see on Friday. No, it's actually, you know, the 10 and 11 a.m. That's okay. the highest demand. And then it's followed by Thursday. So really like right before the, the weekend week. and everyone yeah. 
end of the week before I think Monday's probably chaotic for people getting back yeah. into the office, catching up after the weekend. I thought people were going to um, delay their weekends. That's what I thought was happening Monday morning. It's like, just going to make my weekend yeah. longer. <laughs> longer. Totally. Well, and the interesting thing is Sundays, because for us, when we, you know, started self-guided tours a year ago, we had basically said, okay, great. We're going to offer them where on um, Saturday and Sunday, we actually have the largest team for showings and mm-hmm. showings operations because we figured sense. that's when people aren't working. And so they can go and um, view the property. Sunday is the latest day, the latest day for showings. And that was actually shocking to me that even like Tuesday and Wednesday have more. If you give this is if you give the tenant the option of seven days right. a week showings, they are more likely to be booking during the weekdays. Yeah. And then, of course, Saturday morning. And then after Saturday morning, for some reason, they're like, "Nope, I'm." Uh, yeah, I, they want to do it. I'm done they want to take. Joints. Yeah, they want to take work hours to do it. I mean, that's what I've. Yeah. I, I think most of my. Yeah, when I I haven't asked that question in a while, but yeah, it, from back in the day, it was definitely Friday, Saturday, Sunday was almost never right. It was just yeah. pretty pretty wild. So. Very, very cool. Yeah. Well, if somebody wanted to check out Hem Lane, play with the 14-day trial, practice being a landlord, check out all the websites you advertise to. Where do they go and get the said trial? Yeah, you can go to www.hemlane.com and just mention um, one rental at a time because you get 20% off your first year, which no one else gets. Um, it's a it's a huge perk of being part of the community. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I love the fact that you bring da- data to the group. Um, remind remind folks, how many units is under Hemley? We have over 26,000 rentals. So just 26,000. That's, that's really 26,000, yeah. I kid, I kid. <laughs> Dana, you're amazing. Thank you for being here each Thursday. Great. Thanks for having me, Michael. Yep.